Welcome to IJDM and today we are going to be doing a video about the keyboard from hell. I finally got it from my buddy and it's every bit of in the worst condition possible it could ever be in. There was paint spilled on it if you can see in this light over here. I did do a test little run here and on a button. I don't even want to touch it. It's so nasty. I mean it's just it's it's in some pretty rough shape and a lot of the keys as you can see are like you push them and they're like won't even go down because of, I guess there's paint or something so this oh wow is going to be uh, quite the uh, restore project so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and try to clean it up using some denatured alcohol I did do the test pieces and it looks like most of that paint is going to come right off so let's just get started and I'm not going to talk much during the cleaning phase you can just get to watch and see how this looks when uh, I get finished with it and when I get to the phase where I kind of get most of this paint off and just kind of got it so it's it's touchable then I'm going to go ahead and and go ahead and uh, try to open it up and see if I can get uh, see what's going on inside Okay, here's where we're at now. I got it sort of cleaned up, and as you can see, most of the paint uh, from earlier is mostly off, except for in between the keys, which I could keep scrubbing, but my hope is once I get this apart, I can take the uh, keys individually out and give them all a good scrubbing and make them look like new and give the uh, case a proper scrub down. I just wanted to get the grittiness off and just make sure that this paint was gonna come off. There is some stubborn spots of some other type of paint here, so. Oh, uh, that's going to be fun. And then I just went over the backside. And every time I flip this over, I mean, this just all this stuff just comes out. I have no idea if this was in a shed or actually buried in his backyard. <laughs> I mean, at this point. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and unscrew this and just see what we're dealing with uh, underneath. Okay. So this shouldn't be a problem. This should clean up fairly well, just by the looks of it, first off. Next thing we need to do is take the actual keyboard thing out. So this is a Mitsumi keyboard. Other than telling you it's a Mitsumi, I really don't know what else to say about it. Oh man, it is just crispy in there. All right, Let's get this off. All right, so that's cleanable now. I'm probably going to take that to the side and let's see what we're dealing with. Do these keys come off? Yes, they do. Whew. All right. Well, our next thing is I already have a picture of the keyboard, plus I have the video from earlier. I'm going to get a little container to put all these in so I can properly store all these springs in case there's any different ones and see what the switch, switch, see what the switch situation is underneath. So let me go ahead and grab that. I'm going to see if I can use my key, pill, uh, key puller on this. OK, 
Okay, we've got a bowl here to and a key puller. I might have a better one sitting around somewhere. So I'm just gonna throw all the springs in there unless I see one different. And we'll see if the key puller is actually gonna work on this. I have two different types here, but the idea is you just kinda, I guess, do this and this. Yeah, okay, well that works pretty good. Look at all the stuff coming out of there. You want to be careful pulling these off. I may look like I'm being rough, but I'm actually being quite gentle with them because you don't know how to break the stocks underneath. I am guaranteeing one of them is probably going to break and it's probably going to be the one I need the most. So we started with those and oh man, you just see that dust just going everywhere. I'm not sure if I can use the key puller on this or not. So nice even straight pull up is the way you want to take these off. I guess that doesn't work. I can keep doing it the way I am doing it. I'm not totally sold on this key puller, but I'm trying to do this the proper way. So we got those off. I'm going to skip over this section because these seem to be the in the better condition. They're not what they call melded together is what uh, the guy I got it from said. And then, yeah, they are indeed melded together. The X and D key, I mean, and the, I guess if you want to do macros. <laughs> well, that's not really funny, but oh God, I don't know how these keys are going to come off. Hoping I can just. Okay, we got that key. Okay, all the keys are off. Most of these look good. If you can see in the camera there, I'll hold this as close as I can. The keys kind of bounce back up when you, which is a good sign, but here's where it gets grim. See, there's a few of them that are just not, I'm worried something got down in there, which means this is gonna be a lot more work because I know there's no way those keys are gonna work properly. There is probably about 25, 30 screws here. I'm gonna have to take this back plate off, take this circuit board off, and basically get this separated, see if I can separate the keyboard mechanism from the actual uh, PCB underneath and back plate. So that's our next step we're gonna do and see what the damage is underneath. So right now it is looking, I would say, pretty grim. Okay, well, maybe it's just stuck on there. I don't know if it's glue or what. Hopefully I'm not breaking this. Oh God, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I can already see what's gonna happen here. Oh, this is gonna be a dandy. I've dealt with this kind of thing before. And you'll find out here in a minute as I lift this off. And there you go. Yeah, these all had to come out, but <clears throat> I did take a picture and of course I have the video of it so I kind of know what's what's what here and good news is the PCB is not too bad but the bad news is I am feeling carbon underneath which means I'm gonna have to clean every single one of those and this bit be might be one of those projects where I literally have to pull this thing apart uh, a couple times to get all the keys working if the carbon pads have gone bad underneath I'm hoping just cleaning them will take care of the problem, but I've never had much luck with that part of it. I'm just pushing through the last of these so I can get this thoroughly cleaned and, and taken care of. 
and it actually looks like some of the uh ooh, that's not good Ooh, we might have a major issue here it looks like we are in trouble and this might be a wash and i'll explain why when i pulled this off as carefully as i try to do it chunks of the actual pcb underneath actually peeled with it and i am definitely just with my blind eyes i'm already seeing some broken traces and this is just going to be probably a wash at this point oh man i probably maybe i shouldn't have taken that off but uh yeah that's what we're dealing with i mean some of the traces are there some are not any of these traces are broke it's it's that's and basically the end and i can already see some in here you can see the metal pieces so as of right now this might be a wash but what i'm hoping is something i don't know what but <laughs> um yeah i probably shouldn't have peeled that off even though those keys were sticking maybe i could have figured out some kind of alternative for cleaning them but oh man what a mess yeah i had a feeling when i got this keyboard that it was not going to be fun and good god even trying to do bod wires and all that other stuff and i don't think you can on this type of situation and i am seeing a lot of traces that are just not there see i'm seeing them connected there i'm trying to see exactly which traces possibly might have broken off and that looks just like it was resting on there but definitely this one so mainly in this area which i suspected could happen well the strange part is we will go forward with this because as i look closer the space bar is here this is a key so the keys are only here but the good news is maybe it was just but i'm seeing some metal in here so i'm not sure if it's the trace around it uh, let's see yeah, this is interesting i hope i have the right way to figure out what's going on here okay so i'm seeing traces here but oh yeah, yeah 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 they're missing there so yeah something's definitely gonna be messed up so those traces are definitely gone they're right there uh, there's some there 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 yeah so i'm thinking this keyboard is not going to be repairable at this point i probably and somebody will probably say i probably shouldn't have but just looking judging from this and the corrosion and the fact that this is all bubbled here this thing got wet at some point what I'm probably going to do is just reassemble it, clean it up a little bit, reassemble it, see what possibly could work once I get the video cables and, and go from there. But for now, I'm just going to clean this lightly with just some isopropyl alcohol. And same with this, try to clean up this a little bit. And Actually, I'm not even going to bother with this bottom part, to be honest with you, because if the traces may possibly reattach when I screw, maybe I'll get lucky there. But I, I, I'm doubting anything at this point with this keyboard. I'm counting at least probably couple dozen traces and i mean even on the, this side over here it is just totally just messed up and that is just one sad story right there and it looked sad when it started but hopefully we can get it looking good and maybe you know be a parts uh machine minus the cpu because the rest of it is salvageable but it's just this board is just i i think this is toast to be honest with you i don't see a way of repairing it and i don't know if you can get these just the pcbs where it's cheaper i mean they can know the keyboards can go for upwards of two three hundred dollars on ebay maybe even four hundred but <laughs> not at this point no thank you unless somebody knows somebody wants to give one away and has no use for it that might be working and stored under better conditions but this indeed is the keyboard from hell and for now we're going to stop down and i'm just going to do some cleanup and try, start to uh try to reassemble parts of this okay i decided to keep at it and Go ahead and clean these keys so far keys are coming out good we know the board is a wash but uh all i'm basically doing is using some uh, and i don't usually do this but because of the paint on the keyboard i am using uh denatured alcohol and uh as you can see from this key it is pretty bad so what i'm doing is basically starting with the face 
and just scrubbing the heck out of it. And I mean, this cloth is obviously filthy because I've, all I've been using it for is the keyboard. And if I get lucky, usually once I go around each side of it, and just kind of doing this kind of thing, usually most of the paint comes right off. Except for some stubborn parts. And what I'm usually doing with that is I'm just taking a razor blade and just lightly kind of persuading it to come off because it's obviously on there thick and once I get it to kind of a point where it's good it may be scratching it of course but I mean at this point I mean I'm not gonna overly fuss with it too much I'm just gonna try to get these keys so they look presentable and I make this keyboard presentable who knows maybe I'll end up in a museum as a non-functioning unit maybe somebody will take it for parts who knows well, I'm doing just kind of taking a toothbrush and just cleaning. The insides are just dusty. They're not really dirty at all. It's kind of hard to get those dirty. And then the PCB, or excuse me, the keyboard, actual holder. As you can see, it's got stains on it. I got it mostly clean. There's a couple of little areas where there's some stuff, but I mean, I'm not going to fuss with this too much. If I really wanted to scrub it down and get it perfect, I probably could use a bunch of components, but or a bunch of different. Uh, cleaning products but for now i'm going to keep on these keys and eventually get this uh pile sorted and get all these little these little nifty difty oh man this is gonna be fun putting all these back in and then reassembling it and then we'll see where we're at and i'm going to clean up obviously clean up these shells while i got them out and see where we're at and see if we can get this uh reassembled and at least looking good and maybe partially working if at best Okay, we got the main part all back together. Most of them are springy again, including this one I had to worry about, but it's come right back and there was a couple others that are still kind of being a little stubborn, but I've cleaned them up as much as I can. I really could go crazy cleaning this, but at this point, it's it's not worth it. It's just not worth it because I know there's just no way this keyboard is going to be fully functional and it's a shame, I know, but... I guess we have to do this the other way around. Let's try this. So we'll put this piece in. You see me shaking. It's because it's getting cold out here. And I've pretty much had enough of this keyboard. And I want to get some rest. So we'll put this right back in where it goes. I think it... Yeah, yeah it looks like it goes right about there. It's no big deal. It's only six screws on the back holding this thing on. So we'll just put the cover back on and make sure it goes back in place yeah i didn't really go crazy cleaning the actual outside bottom area or neither the top for that matter because it, it, i like it i mean it is what it is i'm oh, sure, sure that's right. lined up I'm going to try this again. Some of these screws got a little bit of something something going with them here. This was used in a production environment along with the Amiga. So my guess is over the years, even before it was, it was retired, the situation became where having worked as an editor and been around production studios most of my life, I can tell you, there's God only knows what's been spilled on this keyboard and even if it was even functional when it was retired I mean, I'd like to think it was but and just Being stored over the years and yeah pulling it pulling that board off I'm not sure I could have done anything about that. It was just stuck on there and I had no clue what was going on But lesson learned and I mean these things happen when you're working on this old stuff. It's not always it's not always a win scenario I mean, I've I've had some fails off camera so that I've had to go back and, and try to fix so there we go and I'll take care of that wire after I will clean that up as well 
But now comes the more fun part of the evening where I turn on some music and you can just watch this in basically a fast forward mode. And then I'm going to clean this up a little bit more with simple green and kind of get some of the scuffs off. But I got most of the paint off. I mean, it's it's pretty, I mean, compared to what it was, it's starting to look really good. As far as retro writing goes, I'm going to try to use the sun method and just kind of let it sit outside. We got some sunny days coming up over the next week, so I'm just going to kind of let it sit outside and let the sun do its thing and just rotate it and change direction. I could do all that stuff, but like I said, at this point, it's just, it's not worth it in my book. So let's go ahead and start putting this thing back together. And just before I do, I'm just going to make sure that uh bumping the stand here. Just anything that has those little bars in it. I know people usually put uh, the oil stuff on there. All right, well, just enjoy me putting these keys back in place. And these are always the funnest ones, especially this wonky tonk key. Which I don't have the greatest light out here right now. Hmm. Yeah. I guess it just kind of goes like that. Well, that would have worked, but I almost had it, but I need a spring. Okay, excuse the camera shaking. I have an extra thing going here. And at this point, all the keys are functional. Three keys are a little sticky there, but all the keys are working. And there it is. And it may appear a little yellow just because of the lighting. And a couple keys. And for some strange reason, I have one smaller spring left. I'm not sure which key that goes on, but... Here, I got a few keys I got to double check because some of the springs cross-linked with each other. So I'm going to have to figure out what, what's what on that. But for tonight, I'm calling this project done. This keyboard <laughs> still sticking to the is looking a lot better and happier. But it's still had better days uh, in its previous life before it had paint on it and ended up with a... Well, the keys aren't too bad too bad but 
definitely better keyboards out there. But there you have it. Uh, in a future video, I plan to go ahead and plug this in, test it, see if I can get a caps lock or get anything working on it. But until I get the monitor cable uh, for the Commodore, I'm not going to be able to do much to know if this is even working or if it, even an Amiga is working. So this could all be for naught, but I'm pretty sure this keyboard is probably going to be mostly non-functional, if functional at all. Who knows? We'll see, and I just got to clean up this cord. Nothing exciting there. I'm just going to clean it with a little bit of alcohol and make it look nice and clean again. And then uh, there you go. That's it for now. No prize at the bottom of the cereal box for this one. <laughs>